In the Democratic Republic of Congo, incumbent President Joseph Kabila admitted mistakes today after a widely criticized vote which declared him the winner last week. But he defended the election, which has been marked by thousands of lost votes and irregularities. The Carter Center, which observed the voting, said the election, quote, lacked credibility and leading opposition candidate Etienne Chisiketi disputed the outcome and declared himself president. The confusion has led to violence, with residents in some Kinshasa neighborhoods reporting armed police raiding homes and arresting people suspected of opposing Kabila. Opposition members are calling for a revote and say more protests are planned this week. For more, we're joined by George Zongola, professor of African studies at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and author of The Congo, From Leopold to Kabila, A People's History. Welcome to FSRN. My pleasure. Today, the Roman Catholic Church, which sent out some 30,000 election monitors, called into question the election results, saying that the results do not conform to truth nor justice. This comes on top of the Carter Center criticism of the election. Talk about the voting process itself and the results. The voting process was marred by a lot of irregularities, uh, Many voters could not find their names on the electoral rolls at the polling stations they were supposed to vote at. Many voting stations did not have uh, the ballots for president, only had ballots for members of the National Assembly. Uh, some uh, polling stations were fictitious, did not exist. Uh, many ballots were found already marked in favor of Kabila. Uh, so there were a lot of irregularities. But there's no doubt that the votes who did happen to vote, they voted uh, uh, their conscience. And uh, most of the voters, as far as we can tell, voted for Mr. Chisakedi. So Mr. Chisakedi, he's also declared himself winner. He's Mr. Kabila's primary opponent. What is his background and what is he offering voters? Mr. Chisakedi is the historical leader of democracy movement in the Congo. He has been fighting for democracy since 1980. And this is uh, since 19, December 1980. Uh, he went through a lot of uh, torture uh, in Mobutu cells and uh, uh, remote detention camps around the country and persisted, created his party, the UDPS, the Union for Democracy and Social Progress, in 1982 in a country where uh, one party was a rule, and opposition parties were illegal. In 1992, he was elected prime minister by the Sovereign National Conference, a constitutional and political reform convention uh, consisting of 2,842 Congolese. And I was privileged to be a participant in that uh, great uh, uh, assembly held by the Congolese people. Now, a discussion of politics in the DRC uh, needs to also include um, discussion about foreign influence and regional uh, influence as well. You have pointed out that even in the city of Kinshasa, which is not far from the Inga Dam, one of the largest hydroelectric projects in the world, people go days without electricity and sometimes even shortages of water. Uh, The DRC is also a region rich in mineral resources. Talk about the influence of foreign companies and governments such as the U.S. and, and how mineral wealth influences politics in the area. Very much so. Uh, the Congo is a victim of its wealth. Uh, neighboring countries such as Angola, Rwanda, and Uganda have continued to plant the Congo of its resources. Uh, and these ha- also happen to be countries that are close allies of the United States. And this is why we don't understand the hypocrisy of the United States, uh, why Mrs. Clinton, the Secretary of State, should make a statement condemning elections in Russia is fraudulent. And so far, she has not made any statement condemning the election in the Congo as fraudulent. The fraud in the Congo was much more blatant and at much higher scale than in Russia. So the question is, are, are uh, black people not entitled to the same respect uh, for their views and, and their rights as, as white people around the world? This is some of the questions we want to know. 
And opposition leaders and those critical of the election outcome have pledged more protests in the coming week. George Zongola is professor of African studies at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and the author of The Congo from Leopold to Kabila, a People's History. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.